Hello and welcome you all in the last episode of Bharat Utsav. I am Chaitrali Maske. As you all know, Bharat Rath is celebrating Bharat Utsav in which we are collaborating with the local producers, NGOs, women groups and FPOs to showcase their themselves and their product, products so that uh, the mission the mission goes for vocal for local and we are being a part of it. So today we are going to uh, Today we are going to understand what a uh, foundation does. Uh, it's the Ishpande Foundation, and it does very really a very great work. So from this next clip, we'll just a small video in which we'll try to understand what this organization does. Dreams, they come in many hues many colors. Dreams. They have a name. They have a home. Dreams have a million stories. Dreams hold their breath, raring to go. Waiting to take off, soar high. Dreams weigh their wings, waiting to fly in the infinite sky. Dreams grow like paddy in soil. Dreams sprout in the mind of a child. Dreams are the bricks that build a house, or the world brick by brick. Come, let's build a new world. A new day is beckoning. Let's try. Let's fail. Let's leave a trail for those who are coming. Let's build a bridge, a raft, a road. Let's cross over, young and old. Welcome abode. Come, let's bring water to the field. Mark it to the yield. Come, let's grow opportunities on trees. Spread aromas and fragrance. Let's expand the horizon. Let's instill confidence. Let's innovate. Find a sustainable solution. Let's help the vision. Start a revolution. Let's smile together. Let's dream to infinity. Look at a challenge as an opportunity. For nothing is more meaningful than a life fully lived. And nothing more beautiful than a dream that comes true.
it was indeed a very inspiring video as you have seen uh, the various areas of work of the Ishpande Foundation and we are going to talk more about it. So today we let uh, today we have Debarga Sarkar and he's uh, he's a part of the Ishpande Foundation. Let's know more about the Ishpande Foundation from him. Yeah, thank you, Chaitanya. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, yeah, so I think uh, she introduced myself, and uh, I'll just take some minute of your time to just introduce myself again. Uh, so, I graduated as a chemical engineer in 2013, and I worked for yeah. five years in the industry. Uh, after that, uh, I did my MBA from AM Calcutta, and uh, I always had this, uh, you know, this passion towards working to, for the real community, uh, working for India, um, and uh, look at you know rural transformation and how uh, young talented individuals can transform the rural ecosystem of India. So I joined DF in uh, 2020, and uh, I'm part of CEO's office, and uh, I look after uh, strategic projects. Um, and help the team to build innovative products, innovative business models, and execute um, such pilots at scale. So um, that's how uh, the, the brief journey of my has been um, from Karakpur in West Bengal to now Hubli uh, in North Karnataka. Great, great. Devaraga, can you tell us about uh, in brief about the Ishpande Foundation? Uh, we have already seen the video and the work yeah, yeah. is like awesome, but we would like to know more from you. Right. So, uh, so Deshpande Foundation, the, uh, so it is uh, an initiative by Guru Raj Deshpande. He's an Indo-American entrepreneur, um, you know, um, graduated uh, from IIT Madras and then went on to US and Canada to make uh, different technological products. Um, he was one of the richest American in, in the 1990s and 2000s. And then he focused his energies in building something um, which is very innovative and can solve the problems of India. Um, that's when Deshpande Foundation was established in 2007. Um, so it, the you know, vision for uh, Deshpande Foundation was they wanted to create an ecosystem where uh, the entrepreneurial mindsets are nurtured and that uh, these entrepreneurial mindsets you know coming from um, not from the metros but from the non metros uh, and that so that they can impact the grassroots problems um, through innovation collaboration and sustainability so uh, in short they work in um, areas which um, changes uh, lives, livelihoods. Um, and uh, so the, in brief, the program is called Mass for Masses, where Mass stands for micro entrepreneurship, agriculture, skilling, and startups. So Deshpande Foundation works with government, with policymakers, with other NGOs in this nonprofit sector, with the academicians, with philanthropists, and DF wants to you know reduce that gap between the haves and the have nots. So people with the disposable income and the ones with without the disposable income. So there is a difference in standard of living, there is a difference of uh, the mindset, uh, the attitude that it needs correction and it realized that there are needs uh, that to be corrected and uh, and so far so so good. I mean in 12 years, DF has been able to, you know, impact uh, one lakh farmers, um, upskill ten thousand students, uh, supported four thousand plus micro entrepreneurs, and have also incubated hundred plus startups, uh, which are solving the problems of India. So um, that's a little introduction about DF, Chetrali. Uh yeah, it was pretty good. But uh, can you tell us about what are the areas of work, uh, like specifically, what are the areas uh, Deshpande Foundation is working and what are the areas we tend to focus? Right. So if you uh, understand this, um, how do you make an impact uh, of a non-urban uh, area? Okay. 
and so it has to be at different levels so the intervention cannot be at one point or one area so it looks at making a change in the life of a farmer it wants to make a change in the life of the aspiring um, student um, who wants to be getting good jobs um, you know and move out of the rural system and maybe take up jobs that uh, the metro cities are offering them then it also looks at who are these entrepreneurs and do they have any ideas of their own and can they be supported through uh, credit market access mentorship and at the end when you have touched lives of a student life of a farmer life of a businessman you're also looking at uh, the community of startups which are um, you know grown um, from the non urban areas and they are aimed at solving problems of non urban areas so so the four areas that df uh, creates or tries to create an impact um, is one agriculture two uh, micro entrepreneurship um, aiming at so the thousands of micro entrepreneurs that india has um, and then the third is skilling so it's skilling for jobs so they make a graduate coming out from a college uh, absolutely job ready in terms of confidence in terms of communication in terms of skill sets uh, that's the third and the fourth intervention is as i said uh, it happens through uh, startups so df through uh, a huge infrastructure set up in hubli uh, called deshpande startups it invites um, applicants and and at different levels so they they can be fresh out of college uh, they can be experienced or aged startups but somewhere they are either looking at validating the product or validating the model or looking for scale uh, so they are looking for funding support so altogether um, the entire pipeline if you see from agriculture to startup is aimed at uh, strengthening um, and nurturing that uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurs and change makers and uh, the belief is uh, we don't have to look really at uh, you know the metros and the, the 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 topmost universities to make a change but the change can happen from within if they are picked up at the right age at the right time given the right mentorship and direction um, i think the rural community themselves can solve a lot of problems of their own and that's where uh, the heart and soul of deshpande foundation lies so uh, many people with most of the startups uh, might be coming to you and as you said that uh, there are students there are startups so how do you identify them or how do you guide them right so uh, so typically uh, what happens is you like to know about uh, if you say the products local producers or the food items you can say so how do you guide them right so uh, so let's talk, talk about micro entrepreneurship in more detail so uh, micro entrepreneurship as the name suggests you know it is um, an entrepreneur who we have identified is that we want to support is somebody who is earning not more than 15 lakhs per annum and he is not earning more because he is limited to growth because of certain reasons and the reasons could be the access to capital access to markets uh, professional mentorship uh, uh, or even just the idea right to have a business but they don't know how to proceed or they don't know what compliances they need to make their businesses being established and then grow so micro entrepreneurship program uh, which started little later than when df started intervening so df started intervening with skilling that is in 2007 so micro entrepreneurship program came up in around 2012 and at that point um, the idea was granting um, um, capital to um, entrepreneurs whom we uh, who sent applications and we saw potential in them 
um, through different uh, evaluation criteria. Later on, we felt that it's limiting the number of people we wanted to impact. So what we did, we had designed an elaborate system where there will be an awareness program on entrepreneurship where we'll invite applications from uh, people across North Karnataka. So I think I missed one thing that DF uh, focuses as of now predominantly in areas of North Karnataka. And there are uh, five districts um, where they are actively present here. Um, so Dharwad is one, Belgao is another, Haveri, Gadag, um, and Uttar Kannada. And there are uh, two more districts in Telangana where there is a team. And um, so in Telangana, we have centers at Nizamabad and, uh, and uh, I'm forgetting the name. So um, that is where I think these, this, the, the interventions are there in different spaces. And coming back to micro entrepreneurship, I think uh, so. The program is designed where you know the invitations are are, ex, are we invite them to apply. Uh, there is a, a robust program where uh, they're given hand holding support, mentorship support. Uh, if they want to apply for loans, we also give them access to loans. We connect them to bankers um, who can fund them. We can guide them better. And then we have our own market access programs, which we call Santes. Santes are uh, typically exhibitions. Sante is the current name for exhibitions. So we put people to different Santes. Um, so we organize uh, from a small Sante, which is maybe uh, 30 to 40 participants, um, to mega Santes, which, uh, which have uh, 100 plus participants. Uh, so we set up their stalls. At different places um, in districts, uh, in most of the capital places of our districts in which we operate, and then we run this uh, exhibitions from three days to seven days, um, depending on you know uh, people's wishes and our wish to see more results. And uh, so this overall funnel, if you see from mentorship to credit access to market access, is something which is actually creating a real impact. Uh, in terms of um, rise in incomes from micro entrepreneurs. So uh, what we have assessed internally is, um, you know, micro entrepreneurs, the most, the biggest problems that they have is uh, finding the right market for their products. So, and they find problems with, with little, to the very little things that they have, you know, from labeling to packaging to, uh, um, you know, coming up with a tagline, coming up with a brand name, everything. So, uh, so while Sante is a bigger and a major, major platform, uh, what happens is, you know, it happens, you know, maybe once in a month, twice in a month, and a few number of times in a year. So it's not something which is 24 seven. It is not something which is um, there for customers to see, uh, explore and keep trying always you know and it's limited in terms of its reach as well so that is where i think uh, uh, the idea came in that why don't we look at uh, specific interventions in a bigger way so we looked at uh, training as well so we have uh, different sets of training you know it can be skill development training to business management to bookkeeping trainings so those things also got carved out so the needs were assessed so the training needs, the market needs, and the credit access needs, all of them were assessed. And in all of these areas now, micro entrepreneurship team is a small team of 35 people here, but we are supporting a network of more than a thousand entrepreneurs in North Karnataka. And we also wish to grow beyond. Uh, so we wish to grow to 10,000 micro entrepreneurs in the period of next five years. Uh, and uh, there are different uh, plans that are in progress right now uh, that is we believe is going to help us reach there happy faces and more number of happy faces across this region um it was uh, indeed a very detailed knowledge about all your <laughs> projects you are working on and the impact it will create on the people's life 
my next question will be related to women you can say how do you ensure that uh, all your projects have a large number of women working or what are the activities you carry out so that uh, the women participation is uh, increased you can say and uh, to sustain it what are the various activities you carry out for this right so um so we did a uh, you know a study uh, of our own and uh, by a third party team who does impact assessments and uh, the results are here with us so uh, interestingly we figured out that you know 73% of our micro entrepreneurs like 1000 plus micro entrepreneurs that i mentioned 73% of them are women and uh, and they are not very old they are uh, their median age is around 30 to 35 uh some of them at least 50% of them have completed 10 standards so they are educated may not be completed with graduation and even beyond but they predominantly female and uh, they have developed some skills that they um that they have possessed because of either they have come at, come from their own families or they have developed from some skills based on what they felt is the best way they could support their families so predominantly what we have figured out is um, a large part of these women are you know trained in different tailoring activities so so they were tailors they made food items and they also made handicraft items so and then there are different set of interventions for each level so while we said like so if there is your tailoring woman who is maybe earning um maybe 5000 rupees a month through tailoring activities we said that why don't you learn an additional activity like embroidery skill and with an embroidery skill what you can do is uh we can impart you a training on embroidery and then you can you know with a partnership of other women in your locality uh if you can open up a boutique you will see orders coming in for you know embroidery work on sarees embroidery work on blouses and all these garments and this we have seen pick up tremendously over the last couple of years now these are one set of women who are tailors right so we lifted them to one level up and we ensured that their earning potential grows from maybe 5000 or 6000 a month to more than 10000 a month right that's one now there are also women uh, whom we are figured out they are actually from the food based micro entrepreneurs so when we talk about food based micro entrepreneurs we find that there are makers of pickles different masalas um um and very unique sort of sort of products you know sourced from something similar to uh so from your horticulture based products but they do not know or they at one point they didn't know what to do with it so we also gave them suggestions and ideas and that was through different mentorships that we engaged them throughout the year somebody who could just tell them that if you have ginger but if you can add masala to that ginger and you can sell it as a masala ginger it sells like hot cake so 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 little interventions in terms of the product knowledge or the the type of products that the world is looking at you know and those are things which have helped entrepreneurs in general and specifically women entrepreneurs because by nature we felt that women um kind of you know is is the backbone of every family and an independent uh woman financially independent woman is an important uh you know it's is one of the most important things for india to progress because an educated woman a successful woman can you know take care of her kids can educate her own kids and take care of the family and uh, not not just from a support point of view but even in some cases where we felt that women have been skilled to a level where their earnings exceed the earnings of the male members of the family so if when that happens we say that they become financially independent and they become i would say the uh, you know the uh, in a patriarchal world they would say the the fag- figure head of the family or the family head so they assume that role in certain areas as well so uh, that's what i talked about women 
and uh, one of the initiatives where we talk about uh, women is is incomplete with if we don't mention about uh, Swapalami Sakhi Producers Company Limited. So there were around 200 plus people, uh, women, all women, and uh, majorly from the tailoring community. And they got in together uh, for making masks during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we approached our CSR Connects and we got in orders for mask making. And we engaged these women um, who went to tailoring to make masks. And that is when uh, in 2020, uh, this producer organization of 250 plus women um, was formed. Um, right now, uh, some of them continue to remain as sailors. Some of them, like we mentioned, we have given continuous set of trainings, basic to advanced level of trainings to graduate them into RE embroidery artisans. And the others permanently are also into food sector. Um, so this is one of the initiatives which talks about how we have tried to bring in women from different strata um, and you know collectivize them into a group so that they um, improve significantly um, with their inputs with their um, uh, with the cost of inputs with the skill levels and with the management skills they can run company um, full of women and uh, take care of their families yeah true as you said it's really a great initiative um... So right now we are talking about products made by these women. Can we uh, talk in detail like how these products are unique uh, as comparison to the market products? Can you just uh, brief us about these products? Right. So you will see some of these products which are there. So these are like this a Shenga chutney. It's a groundnut chutney. Um, it's the taste is very uh, authentic to Karnataka. You know, there is a lot of spices in it. There is garlic. There is coconut there is curry curry leaves in it and there are different combinations of these different uh, spices which goes into these chutneys this is one um, which makes it uh, truly coming from from a local flavor uh, very authentic to the regional taste uh, something that they have known for many years but now they have learned to package it in a different way like this is an example where uh, it's a very good technology of a uh, frying uh, such things like kabuli chana or chips or peas or jackfruit chips in low quantity oil at very low temperatures, but then pack, packed very you know attractively, and it serves as a in, as a healthy snack, um, and uh, this goes well. And then there are items like you know millet based products, which are like uh, it's a millet mix. So you'll have foxtail millets and your other millets which are now curated into different styles with little, little taste. And uh, there are also ragi malt available. So all of these products, like, you know, millets, probably people from the region consume millets a lot, but then it stopped. But then when people figured out about the nutritional benefits of millets, uh, we told them that, you know, this is something that we can go on. And when they started making it, we felt that there is more and more scope to such products. Then this is another unique product. It's, uh, it's called Joni Bella. Um, it's uh, liquid jaggery. And then uh, adjacent to it, you'll find another image of Bisibele Bhat Masala. It's just a rice-based uh, mixture. They consume with rice. A um, lot of garlic, cloves, onion, uh, you know, red chili. Um, and those things are mixed here. And it, each of them adds a very unique taste to these different masalas. Um, can go on yeah so then you'll find that you know so so i talked about ragi or millets millet based cookies so why have biscuits made of wheat why don't we have bit biscuits made of uh, ragi or millet it's uh, much more you know richer in nutrients um, healthier and then why don't we you know club it with some added flavors so, so there are chocolate flavored uh, ragi cookies which are there, there for consumption and then I just mentioned this. So there is ginger, there is amla, there's lemon, everything dried, sun-dried, and then coated with some spices and herbs to accentuate the taste. And they are packed in very you know useful uh, packet sizes, pocket-friendly, and uh, good for you to taste. And these are cold-pressed oils. Unlike refined oils, they go through a very natural process of 
you know, processing from seeds to extraction of oil and uh, very unique, maybe a little more pricey, but it's absolutely essential, natural. It doesn't lose much of its nutrient quality. And that's why we promote such products uh, from our micro entrepreneurs. Um, very little preservatives or minimum preservatives, nothing of that sort, absolutely natural from local ingredients, local taste, um, finds good applications in, in, in everything that you eat daily, you know, from any chutney along with some rice, some samba, all these things. But look at uh, masala chili powder. So the normal red chili powder that you will find in a store, like an MDH masala, um, a red chili powder, all of that. But to that, uh, say a local chili powder added with some level of masala. It's very unique. Um, Gurelu Puri. Uh, so these are all different variants of... Uh, so Gurelu Puri is jeera powder, but it had some added uh, flavors to it. And it's all of them are, can be consumed with rice, with, with chapatis, and it, it gives you a very sumptuous feeling of having a meal, proper meal. Great, great. A wide range of products you are having. So, uh, I I would like to know uh, what what was the impact of uh, COVID and uh, uh, on this uh, producers? Like, uh, how has COVID uh, been there? Can you tell us about that? The impact before, uh, during COVID and post COVID also. You can tell us about. So, like I said, you know, um, I think COVID disrupted our lives and livelihoods like no, nothing else did in the last many decades. So, uh, one important thing which happened during COVID is we realized that we spoke about santes or exhibitions that we conducted. Now, since there were limitations to physical gathering, we could not conduct santes uh, to the extent we wanted to uh, last year. So we looked at uh, more and more collaborations. So we looked at uh, partnerships with, uh, you know, hypermarkets, partnerships with, uh, like, say, that's when I think ideas like Bharatrath came in. Uh, we also looked at enhancing our own capacities to extend marketplaces beyond exhibitions. So we developed building online channels for our entrepreneurs. We created virtual stores for themselves. Um, where they could you know source sell and do things which you know the pandemic wasn't allowing them to uh, we also thought of having a retail store uh, where you know all the entrepreneurial products food non-food handicraft and everything could be sold so one of the impact of pandemic the bad thing which is definitely we stopped the usual modes of market access the usual modes of communication on awareness programs, the usual modes of training uh, that got halted. But we innovated during the pandemic times. We went on to, you know, from physical meetings to virtual meetings, people got trained on, you know, attending Zoom calls on Google Meet sessions. Uh, we conducted trainings uh, on business practices on Google Meets, and we started selling online. So those are the things which happened during the pandemic, good and bad. And I think there are more goods that we take out uh, from our learnings from the last couple of years than bad. Definitely. Uh, how how uh, can you explain your collaboration with Bharat Rath, Right? How 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 it's going to work? Yeah. So like I mentioned, you know, so we started looking at multiple options for market access, um, and we felt that uh, somebody. Uh, we wanted to not just enter into any retail chain or not not with any hypermarket, but with somebody with whom we could trust that, you know, they are coming from a similar mindset of working with the local uh, producers, the local growers, um, you know, giving them a shelf space um, alongside the FMCG majors, because we have been consuming maybe the Ashirwads and the ITC products and all those products for ages. But is there something uh, from our local grown um, or homemade products uh, given a shelf space at premium locations, at premium stores? And that's when the, uh, one of my colleagues, Irana, um, he, I think, uh, had met Sandeep and then uh, both of them decided that there is a lot of common interests that uh, we as a foundation and Bharat Rath as a, you know, a very aspiring inspirational uh, uh, story of uh, 
Bharat for Bharat. So basically, it's India for its Indian growers. And that's when I we felt that there is a possible collaboration where you know we can start um, onboarding our products onto the Bharat Rath platform in extension to the number of people that they already have onboarded across NGOs, across other people, or over the geographies where they operate. And then the idea came along that you know there could be different products which people in Maharashtra might be looking for and might be want to be experimenting with. Uh, so predominantly Bharat Rath is 90% food products and we also have a lot of food products in our kitty. So why we said that, you know, while there could be people, uh, Kannads, uh, Kannadigas in Maharashtra looking for some special flavored Karnataka items there, there could be Maharashtrians who are looking for similar spicy items or something very unique things from Karnataka. And that's where we felt there was a win-win. And uh, we felt that, you know, it's the right time we collaborate and uh, move ahead. Great, Bharat uh, will uh, is really very happy. Uh, will be really very happy to work with you, and uh, to explore uh, new items also. So my next question will be related to Atmanirbhar Bharat. Uh, what is your idea behind that? See, uh, building a self-reliant India is typically about uh, how India can stop depending on other countries to uh, first be satisfied at own level and then also grow in exports. So first comes that uh, whatever thing. So for example, on a bigger scale, it can be oil. So India imports 100% of its oil, right? The crude oil, which is there into petrol. But then is there a scope for petroleum products being made in India? Is there a scope for defense equipments being manufactured in India? And I think there is an emphatic yes to everything. So similarly, we observed that, you know, we have been consuming Chinese toys, uh, Chinese items, electronics items from across different spheres. Where, and where were we? Well, what is stopping us from doing that? And what is stopping our own entrepreneurs to come up with food items, food products that they know is a is a super hit you know locally and why can't it expand beyond local uh, to a national level and become an emerge as a national level brand so that is the idea of having an atmanirbhar bharat so we are experimental uh, so this generation uh, like we talk about you know uh, it's very experimental it's it, it has this the ethos at, at heart that it has to be sustainable it has to be eco friendly so we talk about natural products, eco-friendly products, uh, tasty products. No, there's no compromise on quality and taste, but there can be definitely a change in the way we source them. So instead of sourcing from the bigger MNCs, the you know the uh, the outer world or the bigger brands from outer countries, why can't we have garments made in India, worn in India? Why can't we eat uh, the spices and chutneys? made from different flavors from India and consumed in India. So that's a bigger idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat. And till the time, I, it, it will take a while for people to get used to things like, you know, millet-based products. But I'm pretty sure that there is a huge market for it and that there's a huge potential for it. It's only that we as collaborators, uh, we as, you know, mentors, consultants, uh, with our hearts in the right space, giving them this platform, giving this the opportunity, platforms like Bharat Rath, you know, where uh, they are taking these products from a very local level to a big national level. So that is what is going to, you know, usher uh, this movement called uh, Make India Natmanirbhar Bharat. Exactly. This is where Bharat Rath stands in. Like we promote the local products, local producers, and we we are a platform for them. We we give a platform where they can showcase their products and they can sell and they can reach to the end consumer. Correct. So we have uh, one of our audience and uh, she has a few questions for you. Uh, sure. We have uh, Sneha Katkar. Hi Sneha, good evening. I think Sneha, you're speaking on mute. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 young 
एक यंग एंटरप्रनोर को मैं यही कहना चाहूंगा कि आप बाहर की दुनिया के बारे में आज आपके पास जानने के लिए जो माध्यम है द इंटरनेट यूज दैट टू द बेस्ट ऑफ यू कैन यू नो नॉलेज इज समथिंग दैट इज देयर फॉर यू एंड लैंग्वेज इज नो मोर अ बैरियर देर इज गूगल ट्रांसलेट देर इज एवरी थिंग अवेलेबल फॉर यू इन योर ओन लैंग्वेज सो यू कैन लर्न दैट्स वन द सेकेंड थिंग इज डोंट hesitate to take a risk so today you have schemes like mudra you have schemes like government funded schemes for startups for uh, different rural entrepreneurships where they are going to fund you for your risk taking appetite and keep looking around for collaborators keep looking out for platforms like bharat rath so there are uh, you know if you have an idea if you have a product with you and you want to test it आप जरूर टेस्ट कीजिए आप एक छोटे स्केल पे टेस्ट कीजिए लेकिन आपके पास हमेशा मार्केट लिंकेज के लिए देर आर सो मेनी प्लेयर्स ई कॉमर्स इस तरह से बूम कर रहा है आपके पास सिर्फ आज के डेट में रिटेल एक ऑप्शन नहीं है आपके पास आज के डेट में ई कॉमर्स एक बहुत बड़ा ऑप्शन है आप ई कॉमर्स साइट्स के भी छोड़ दीजिए आप अपने लेवल पे व्हाट्सएप और फेसबुक पे ही सोशल मीडिया बेस्ड सेलिंग कर सकते हैं सच अज अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू फी आर थिंकिंग इन द राइट वे willing to learn from different uh, sources from around you so keep thinking keep learning keep dreaming because there is no dream there is no dream that is too big right now and uh, that's where i would like to leave the message um, for everybody who is very young enthusiastic and is looking for something uh, the support is just maybe a, a one hand touch away just need to keep looking for the right collaborations थैंक यू सर और एक सवाल था मेरा आपके फाउंडेशन के बारे में लाइक like, uh, देश पांडे फाउंडेशन द्वारा ऐसी uh, कौन सी इंस्पायरिंग कहानी है या uh, जिसमें आपके फॉर्म की uh, आपके फॉर्म की मदद से और प्रभाव वो व्यवसाय और प्रभावशाली बने हैं ऐसे कुछ करेक्ट मैं आपको बताता हूँ तो जैसे uh... ऐसे मल्टीपल स्टोरीज है क्रॉस एग्रीकल्चर क्रॉस स्टार्टअप्स क्रॉस डिफरेंट फील्ड्स मैं एनएमडीपी और माइक्रो एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप की बात करूंगा बिकॉज मैं उस फील्ड से ज्यादा जुड़ा हूं या उनके मार्केट एक्सेस में मेरा ज्यादा योगदान रहा है तो एक एक ऐसी एक यूनिट थी महिलाओं की यूनिट थी जो जैसे मैंने कहा कि हम लोग मास्क बनाते थे ड्यूरिंग पैंडेमिक टाइम्स बट पैंडेमिक खत्म होते ही इट्स नॉट ओवर येट बट एक टाइम आया था जब मास्क की डिमांड कम हो गई थी फिर मास्क नहीं आ रहे थे हमारे पास बट वो ट्रेन थे वो टेलरिंग में ट्रेन थे तो उनको फिर हम उन, उनके लिए हमने एक यूनिट एस्टेब्लिश किया और उनको हमने एक मुंबई बेस्ड एक बैग मेकिंग कंपनी थी उनसे हमने ऑर्डर उनको ला के दिए सो राइट नाउ विद इन स्पैन ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स दे आर मेकिंग फ्रॉम थाउजेंड बैग टू टेन थाउजेंड बैग स्टिच आयरन पैकेज एंड शिप टू मुंबई तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि एक पंद्रह महिलाओं के ग्रुप को दो ट्रेनिंग देके पंद्रह पंद्रह दिन के दो, दो ट्रेनिंग देके और एक रिसोर्स एम का रिसोर्स जो उनके साथ लगे रहते हैं जुड़े रहते हैं थ्रू आउट द ईयर यू नो फॉर प्रोसेसिंग द बिल्स थोड़े थोड़े एप्लीकेशंस होते हैं सोर्सिंग में काम करते हैं हर तरह की मदद करते हैं ऑन द फील्ड और आज की डेट में आप देखिए वो दस बैग्स पर मंथ स्टिच करके भेज रहे हैं एंड एवरीबडी इज अर्निंग अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ डिसेंट लाइवलीहुड Because of this initiative, ऐसे छोटे-छोटे micro clusters को हम बढ़ावा देते हैं. Foods में भी हम हमारी कोशिश हमेशा से ऐसी है. तो यहाँ पे एक local entrepreneur थे जो millet based products बनाते थे. तो हमने उनको एक महिलाओं का group दे दिया, एक ऐसा जी group दे दिया, जो already millet में काम करना चाहते थे. और वो लड्डूस बनाते थे. और वो लड्डू को उन्होंने दिवाली के time पे अपने branding, अपने packaging पे बना के उन्होंने different different corporate houses को उन्होंने gift किया. तो इस तरह से हम यू नो लिंक करते हैं लोगों हम लोगों के साथ बहुत क्लोजली जुड़े हुए रहते हैं हमारे ये पांच डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स में से और जो भी हमें प्रोडक्ट मार्केट फिट के तौर पे एक सही पार्टनर एक कोलैबोरेटर मिलता है जो हमें लगता है कि उनकी दे हार्ट इज इन द राइट स्पेस वो सोचते हैं माइक्रो एंटरप्रनर के बारे में वो सोचते हैं भारत के बारे में हम उनके साथ जरूर उनको कनेक्ट करते हैं और फिर वो दोनों आपस में ही प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करते हैं और जहां फिर भी उनको लगता है कि डी as a foundation can come in talk to the government officials can talk to more ngos bring in more collaborations and more efforts we come dalte hain 
तो इस तरह से हम सक्सेस स्टोरीज को धीरे धीरे हम क्यूरेट कर रहे हैं और आगे जाके और भी बड़े सक्सेस स्टोरीज हम सुना पाएंगे आपको ये उम्मीद रखते हैं थैंक यू सर it was a uh, it is a really uh, very inspiring uh, work desh pande foundation is doing and uh, do you have any message for the consumers you can say just the one message uh, like continuing from uh, atmanirbhar bharat keep believing in your products that are made locally uh, you know we see a lot of campaigns during diwali that uh, chinese lamps mat lijiye chinese patake mat lijiye you buy the diyas wo diya making log jo karte hain unki bahut matlab mahino ki mehnat hoti hai wo jo banate hain to buy from them consumers ye diwali ki baat sirf diyas ki baat nahi hai chote chote items food se leke shuru karke garments bhi hame garment pe branded kyu pehna hai hum khadi movement ek swadeshi movement tha jo independence ke time pe raha usko khatam nahi karna hai hame abhi bhi uh, इंडिया में जो कॉटन प्रोडक्शन होता है उसका जो कारमेंट्स बनते हैं बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो हम अपने इंडिया में ही हम खरीद सकते हैं और हमारे आसपास के लोकली हम अगर आप देखें तो बहुत सारे ऐसे प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं जो अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं उनको बढ़ावा देने के लिए उनको लाइफ में उनको एक सस्टेनेबल एक बिजनेस उनको हम अगर हम गिफ्ट कर सके इस तरह से अगर हमारा बाइंग पैटर्न चेंज हो जाए अगर आज हम बोले कि नहीं हम प्लास्टिक कैरी थैली बैग कैरी नहीं करेंगे और हम कॉटन की थैली बैग कैरी करेंगे तो इस कॉटन की थैली बैग को आप पता आपको पता नहीं कि शायद ये 10, 20, 30 माइक्रो ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स एक जगह बना के ये बना रहे हैं आपने आप, आपके लिए बना रहे हैं तो इस तरह से प्रोडक्ट्स को आप इको फ्रेंडली प्रोडक्ट्स को आप प्रमोट कीजिए लोकल प्रोडक्ट्स को आप खरीदिए एंड आई थिंक इस तरह से अगर आप खरीदेंगे और अगर आप स्पेशल टेस्ट की बात करें तो आप अगर महाराष्ट्र से हैं और कर्नाटक का प्रोडक्ट चाहते हैं तो बिल्कुल टेस्ट कीजिए शायद आपको थोड़ा अलग जरूर लगेगा so keep trying keep being experimental and keep promoting uh, you know buying from local artisans local food growers local handicraft makers that makes a lot of difference to their lives sahi kaha apne bharat rat ki bhi yahi koshish hai ki hum zyada se zyada local products ko promote kare aur main sabko yahi kehna chahti hu ki hum as a consumer humko zyada tar local product products ko consume karna hai and uh, that will definitely make a big impact i can say so thank you debarga for joining with us and it has been a really great session aur bahut detail mein pata chala desh pande foundation ke bare mein unki kaam ke bare mein aur bahut sare products ke bare mein we are definitely looking forward to onboard uh, the karnataka specialties uh, and very soon these products will be at bharat rat i i think uh, everybody should uh, take the benefit grab this just bilkul bilkul thank you chetrali for inviting me here i think it was a pleasure discussing uh, those questions uh, answering your queries uh, and of course we always stay to, committed to the true cause that uh, uh, we want to promote as many as local home get authentic products with unique tastes and unique catering to the unique preferences that we indians have and uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed for a, a a wonderful successful collaborative journey between df and bharat forward definitely thank you so much thank you